Thank you very much. Um, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story about Desertec. Let me tell you a story about renewable energy. Let me tell you a story about a revolution. A revolution to create sustainable living conditions uh, on Earth and to secure energy and uh, prevent us from climate change. You all know time flies, and mankind has a lot of challenges. Challenges are quite obvious, so let me skip through some of them. Uh, growth of population is one of the most serious challenges that is, uh, has consequences in many different fields of our living. And as you, as you see in this curve, this is an, an extraordinary growth curve over the last 100 years. Now, this implies a lot of consequences with regard to our resources. Nonetheless, um, uh, some are still, let's say, in the industrialized countries available. Water is one of the most uh, biggest, one of the biggest problems. We have a real shortage in water and food and other basic resources. Um, coming along with uh, the lack of resources, we have um, uh, secondary issues like migration, socioeconomic development, and peace. And last but not least, we have a question about the security of our energy supply. Um, here you can see a picture of Fukushima, um, which clearly showed that once more after Chernobyl, we have to really think about a sustainable and secure energy supply. And you all know that climate change is uh, another issue that is strongly connected with energy supply. Uh, CO2 emissions and, and other um, emissions coming from, from energy are the causing the anthropogenic uh, change of the climate. As you can see here, we have a severe change of the um, ice cap in the North Pole and in many other regions of the world, which in fact then has uh, additional effects to make a severer climate change. Now, bring this down to a very simple message. Um, uh, you all know the expression of the ecological footprint. And what, what we are creating here as a situation for mankind is that we basically need three planets to live in peace um, with the whole mankind in the year 2050. Uh, we all know this is not possible. So we have, a, have to find a solution to do this all on one planet. Now, what is the basis for this solution? Since Fukushima, it's clearer than, than ever. Um, we need a global renewable energy solution. Uh, the origin of Desert Tech goes back to Chernobyl, back in 86. So it's 25 years uh, since, uh, since then. And at that time, it was not called Desert Tech, but the original idea was developed at that time. And it's a, uh, it's a disaster that we have to have remembered and that we have to have um, uh, an additional uh, idea of, of this um, necessity 25 years later by Fukushima. So we need a global renewable energy solution. How can we do that? Um, there are already uh, first steps in the right direction. We have solar energy, we have wind energy, we have water. We have a lot of renewables coming up, and solutions look very uh, impressive and very um, positive. But we are progressing too slowly. So how can we accelerate, and why is it that we're progressing so slowly? Um, the necessary technologies are available. Basically. Uh, they are all around, and some of them are well established. I would say uh, others are in an early stage, but we know that they work. Um, if you compare it to car industry, uh, if you take, for example, solar thermal power technology, if you compare it to car industry, it's a little bit like in the 20s. You know the car has four wheels, it's got an engine, and it basically works, but it's not yet in an industrialized uh, level. So mass production has not uh, really begun, and things have to be developed further. But in principle, the technological basis is available. Now, how can we accelerate the necessary revolution in order to move fast enough? 
Now let's have a look into history. Uh, other processes in history may teach us how, how to move on here. Uh, usually it starts with an idea, with a vision, with a dream. And um, as you can see here, Nelson Mandela, he lived in prison for many years, but he had this clear vision of what has to happen with his country. And finally, idea can be so strong that it can build nations. Or it can tear down walls, as you can see in German history. Uh, ideas can change the way we live. And uh, as you can see here with Galilei, he had to fight with, his, uh, with the people around him <coughs> for his beliefs. Uh, and usually it takes, and sometimes it takes many hundred years until things are accepted and um, uh, the changes are, become reality. But if you have a really strong idea and a strong vision, it can even bring you up into space. And a couple of years before, nobody would have believed it. And um, some people compare Desert Tech a little bit with the Apollo program. It's a big challenge, but it's possible. And uh, people have to work together, fight for it, and then eventually become successful. Now, uh, in very many cases, it took many hundred years. But still, the idea was so strong that at a certain stage, with the right people, it eventually become reality. So what is behind it? It's uh, Goethe kind of inspired this meeting here today. And Goethe once also said, knowing is not enough, one must apply. Willing is not enough, one must do. And so uh, I think that's the key for, for many ideas and visions to become true. Now, change is not driven by entrepreneurs alone, but you need an entrepreneur. You need somebody who drives it. It's not only driven by charismatic leaders, but you also need a charismatic leader. What else do you need? You need people to follow. You need people to support it, to take this vision, to spread it to their friends, to spread it to their family, and support it. Now, all of the gentlemen showed in this row finally achieved this goal in their life. So they, they had the chance and they, they managed to have people follow them. Now, how can we do that for energy? We have to solve this challenge to come from basically three planets to one planet. And we have to create a, a movement. So well, how can this, this work? You all know the red square. The red square is a symbol of desert tech. It basically says, Renewable energy is highly abundant, especially solar energy. Um, if, if you put this red square in the desert of North Africa, it says, if you use less than 1% of the, of the useful deserts, you can supply mankind with energy. So how does it, does it look like? If you include further, let's say, technical parameters, and you can do some studies, you, you end up with a with a red square that basically is a symbol of how this could work out. Of course, this will be not one big plant, but it shows us renewable energy is highly abundant. Now, uh, studies have shown that for the Yumina region, Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East, this could look like this. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a fixed uh, state, but uh, it's a scenario. It's a mixture of solar, wind, water, and other renewable technologies that are connected with a smart grid. Um, and this can supply the whole region uh, with renewable energy. And it also shows that it's a combination of centralized and decentralized solutions, of global and local solutions. It's a mixture of different renewables. And this can be transferred to other regions in the world. Now, put it in another way, that energy, renewable energy is highly abundant. You can also say deserts of, of the Earth receive in six hours more energy than mankind consumes within a year. So nobody can say it's not sufficient. We have enough energy. And we have a global solution with technically feasible uh, technology. Now, the Desert Tech concept is a solution proposal. It's a proposal for the biggest revolution in history. It's a solution proposal for a complete transition to renewable energy, which is the basis 
for many more things, not just for a secure energy supply. It's a solution for the supply with food, with water. It's a solution to protect the climate and to secure peace. Now, how can we create such a global movement if we have a solution in place or if we have a solution in front of us? How, we, how can we become, make people follow this um, movement and support it? We need to tell a story. I think that's the basis, and we have to convince people. They convince more people, and they <coughs> convince even more people. So how could this story look like? Imagine. We would build a plant, a really huge solar power plant. And it would be built not just by big companies, but people can participate, buy shares, and donate for this plant. They become part of the solution. Now here you can see a plant in, in, in the US. And this could be like, it could be like this, the first, world's first ever community solar power plant. So it could be a combination of a centralized big power plant with a decentralized idea behind it. People can help financing the plant, but they can also share it. They can be part of it. Can, they can uh, touch it. They can be uh, a solu part of the solution. So uh, we would combine advantages of global and of local solutions, of centralized and decentralized solutions. And people would participate and create a movement. Now this world first ever community solar power plant does not go like this. What would be necessary? The basis would be the red square. It would be an internet platform, a social media platform where people can <laughs> sign in and become part of the solution. They can choose a little red square, depending on, on how, uh, how they like and how their financial possibilities are. And um, this little red square would be personalized. It would be attached to their name. They would be personally involved. And of course, each little part is then just a little piece. But many million of pieces put together, can make a big solution. And that's one of the messages of Desert Tech as well. If you put all those pieces together, you can create a big solution. You can create a movement, and you can create a revolution. Now, this would all then go through these different steps in personalizing it. And um, furthermore, yet, then you can go fly into the plant and show it to your friends. You can see, oh, this is my mirror. Here I have donated or bought. And some of you might, might do this. <laughs> so, uh, and you show it to your friends. And this is something, touch it, feel it, experience it, and become part of it. So people become part of the solution. So this is not pie in the sky. This can be done. So let's do it. Thank you.